React isn't dead, but it finally has some real competition. This is Ripple, the new UI framework everyone's talking about, and for a good reason. It's faster, it's lighter, it's simpler, and it does things React wishes it could. Fine-grained reactivity, built in. Clean syntax, it's built in. None of that re-render bloat because it's all gone. Oh, and here's the crazy part. It plays beautifully with Python. From fast API, Flask, Django, it doesn't matter. Ripple plunks right in. So I've rebuilt part of my project with Ripple, integrated with Python, just to see if the hype was real. And what I found was honestly kind of shocking. Let me show you. Guys, we have videos coming out all the time. Make sure you subscribe to follow along. Welcome to the channel. So here's the project we're working with. Now, this right here is just my Python backend. It's just a clean little script uh, with an app main pi file. Uh, I'm logging some modules and I have a couple endpoints here. I have my health check, API health check, API message right here. And this is where we're gonna add in a simple route so Ripple can actually talk to Python, return live data. This is important to showcase that uh, I'm not faking anything here. We're linking Python and Ripple's gonna hit this back end real hard. Now here's where the fun begins. I'm gonna spin up a Ripple project using a Vite style structure right here inside my front end folder. Uh, inside source, I'm gonna create a file called app.ripple.ts. And here is really the core of our entire project inside here. You can see that we're importing component and track. Track is huge, it eliminates the use effect from React and we're going through and I've built out my project. And while I have index, I have my main TS file and we have the app Ripple TS file, um, all Ripple apps basically mount to a single root element, super similar to React, but they're lighter. And this is what makes Ripple run so much more efficiently. Ripple almost looks like if React and Svelte had a kid and then that kid got mentoring from like SolidJS. You get component files, real HTML templates, but all this crazy simple reactivity system using the track function. Now you can see here that we're using track quite heavily. And when count updates, only the parts of the UI that depend on it re-render. Not the whole component, not the whole tree. And the great thing that track does is it replaces the use effect from React. We no longer need that because track takes care of it all. Here's my first demo component, a counter. This entire thing took maybe like 60 seconds to build. Now, when I click this, you can see that everything is incrementing, right? We're using the track function for this. Now, notice the smooth updates. There's no use state, no set state, no hooks, no dependencies. We're just counting and Ripple does the rest. And by using the track function, we eliminate all of that so it almost runs seamlessly and even faster. Next up, we have my to-do list. This is where you can say goodbye to JSX. This is gonna show something that Ripple does really well, and it's the control flow in the template, right? If, if I write down like walk, we can add that. There's no need for the map function, no JSS gymnastics. We're just using if and for. This is exactly the way your brain wants to write UI and Ripple is allowing us to do that. I can clear it all and behind the scenes, we're just using if and for. Let me show you in the code. Everything we just saw on that to-do list input is pretty much done right here. We're just using if, which is what our brain wants to do anyways, and we're entering that data, we're collecting that data, and then we're updating it into that to-do list. We can use if, we can even use for loops inside Ripple. And here's the part I was most excited about, Ripple talking to the Python backend. Now, when I switch over here to our app Python, our main Py file, right? I have all these APIs. These are the roots that I built out in Fast API. And when we interact with these, Ripple can actually call these and get the value of the input returned to us. 
Now here's our backend integration. Because Ripple is running through Vite, we can do or use a dev proxy. All those API routes get forwarded to Python, just like this, I'm getting back blending Python with Ripple. This means there's no core headaches. When I click the button, we hit that API message route, Python responds and Ripple instantly updates. Now, when we generate those logs, these are all the logs actually coming through which is incredible. I, I can create logs on the back end. I can visualize them here on the front end with Ripple. Uh, if we want to create a new user sign up, I send a new API response and we get something back, right? This is great. We can do a checkout process. This is completely different. We're still interacting here on the UI with Ripple, but talking to that back end. So why is this such a big deal, especially for Python devs? Because most Python devs don't want to learn React. They don't want 200 kilobytes of JavaScript just to build a form. They want something small, something fast, something that actually makes sense. And Ripple gives us just that. Your Python handles the API routes, the logic, the services, really all the heavy lifting. All our Ripple over here, this handles the interactive reactive bits in our browser, and the two talk through simple fetch calls. This clean structure is clean, easy to demo, and incredibly fast to build with. Ripple isn't going to replace React, at least not just yet. But it is here to remind us what front-end development can feel like when you remove all that extra jargon. If you want a front-end framework that reacts instantly, <laughs> React and works really good with the Python, the back end, then Ripple might be something that you guys want to play around with. Drop a comment, let us know what you guys think, subscribe for more developer content, and I'll see you in the next one.